Hi and welcome to this third video demo on Perl where we're going to look at uh, taking input from files and uh, a special loop called for each loop which is a very nice little loop. Um, to begin with I made a little sample script and I made a file which contains five lines, line one, two, three, four and five and the idea is that we're going to read this file using the script and then we're going to do stuff with it and at the very end we're going to output to a second file. Uh, so just to begin, uh, taking input from a file is fairly simple. What you do is you have to use open uh, and then within parentheses there is three things that we need beginning with a name. Uh, this is called the file handle, that, uh, the thing that we're opening now. And the first statement here, uh, which is in capital letter, letters, it doesn't have to be, but I like to write them that way, that's the name of the file handle. I named it file handle here, but you can name it Mickey Mouse or whatever you want. Then we have a comma, and the next thing that we have is the operator. So this decides whether we want to uh, create a file handle for writing files, or if we want to create one for reading files. We should have a left pointing arrow if we want to read the file, which is what we want now. And then a second comma, and then we have the file path. Uh, in this case, the script is located in the same folder as the input file, so we can just uh, imp uh, have the n file name of the input file, uh, which in this case is in file.txt. Uh, the next thing we want to do is store the file to a variable or an array so that we can work with it and we do that by basically ha uh, uh, basically creating an array with my at file which will create an array named file uh, equals and the file handle name within arrows so like this so what this code does is first uh, these two lines is that first we open the file in file we open it as a file that we want to read and we're giving it the name file handle. In the second, uh, in the second line we create a variable uh, or an array named file and we decide to store the content of file handle to that array. Uh, finally we're going to print the file uh, or print the array and what we want in the print is to ensure that whatever is in the file is now in the array. So we're going to try to run the script uh, from command prompt, we do it with Perl script name which is file input for each. And you can see that there is line 1, line 2, line 3 and so on and so forth. Um, so that's all nice and good but uh, next thing I want to show you is the for each loop which is a special kind of loop that loops uh, something as long as there is something to loop. That's the very abstract description. In the case of files, uh, you can say that it, or in the case of an array, it will loop the entire array. So the code within the for each loop, loop will be executed once for every element in the array. Uh, so, for instance, in this case, if I just remove the comments here, what we're saying is for each uh, and our file, you should print the line. So how this actually works is that we have the for each, and then we have to declare a variable, which in this case is my line, and my line, or the variable named line, will hold uh, what is uh, hold the information from the array that uh, the array element that we're currently working on, and then at file, which is the array. So what this says is for each over the array and call the data that is in the current element of the array my line. So uh, to make things clear uh, we have a print statement here that will print line uh, and as you see here in the output uh, there are five lines or five elements in the array so for the first iteration line will hold the first element. For the second iteration, line will hold the second element, which is the second line of the file, and so on and so forth. And then the loop will go on uh, all until the array is uh, the array is over. Uh, to clear clarify this uh, up a little bit more, we can add a control variable. So we're going to do that. Let's just declare one here. My uh, dollar control equals zero. So I'm letting it be the uh, array element number for the first iteration it will be zero and then we're going to print that as well print elem element number control 
and then we have to increase the uh, increase the number of control by one uh, and it's actually very simple to increase the num uh, increase uh, a numeric variable you just do that by taking the variable name and then uh, plus plus so that will increase the number of the control variable by uh, by one uh, so let's execute that and you can see down here element number 0 line 1 element number 1 line 2 and so on and so forth and we can remove this first print as well so we don't have to see that every time um, so basically what we do here is that we open a file handle uh, we call it file handle we do we decide that it should be a uh, read we should read the file and uh, we do that with the arrow pointing left and then we and select in file which is the file we want to read. We store the file to an array named file and then we loop that with a for each loop and print uh, every line in the file which is every element in the array. We do that by saying for each and then we declare a variable that will be used only within this for each loop and contain the information that is in the current element of the array and then we say that we're going to loop file. So and then we print element number and the control variable helps us to, uh, helps us print a number and then we print the line. So there is another way you can do this. You can actually decide to just go for each and the array. So you can just go for each at file. Now we don't have the line variable, but there is a built-in variable into Perl that is dollar dollar underscore. And you can so, sort of call this the current variable. So dollar underscore will hold the value that we're currently working with, just as my line just did. So if we execute this code, I'm just going to show you that it does exactly the same thing as what we just had. Uh, see here, element number 0, line 1, line 2, line 3, line 4, line 5. And where the line comes from now is from dollar underscore. Because when we don't declare uh, a variable name and when we don't decide the name of the variable that's going to house the data that we're currently working with then that data is housed in dollar underscore so you can just uh, make sure that you use dollar underscore instead but now you and now you know what it is so the final thing that we may want to do is to let's first combine the print statements so instead of having element number blah, 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 we're, we're going to element number control is dollar underscore and we can just remove this last print and it's going to be the same code in one line less. Let's see that it works. So yes. And now we want to type this to a new file instead of typing it to the prompt. And what we do then is that before our for each loop we have to open a new file handle. So we're opening a file handle. This time I'm going to name it out. So the first thing we write down here is the name of the file handle which is out. And then we're going to, instead of having a left arrow to read files, we're going to have not one but two right arrows. Uh, and then we're going to have a file out.txt. Uh, the reason that we're having two file arrows is that it means append. So when we're writing it like this, we're going to append to the file. If I'm just going to have one, then it means create the file. However, if I have just one, that means that every time I write to the file, I'm going to overwrite the file. So the difference is that if I have a case where I want to print something to a file and I want it to, um, to just make a new file, then I will have one arrow pointing right. But if I want to append to the file, then I will have to have two. This time it will add to the file, but not remove the data that, that was originally in the file. And since we're having a loop where we're going to do not one, but five uh, prints to this file, it will not work very well if we continuously uh, delete and recreate the file. So that's it. And then to print to the file instead of, uh, instead of, the, uh, instead of the command prompt, we just add out the file handle name after a print statement. Uh, and then, to be good and nice, we're going to have close and close our file handle. Uh, and that this is sort of a best practice thing, because every time you open a file handle, it will stay open, uh, and we want to close them so we don't have a lot of running, uh, running forks or processes that are unnecessary. So just make sure that whenever you're not going to use the file handle anymore, make sure that you close it within your program. So now, if I know what I'm doing, I should be able to run the script again. Um, 
and strict is saying that I am not out. Oh, forgot the quotes. There should be quotes around the file name. We're running again. Now you see no output down here, and that is because we decided to uh, save the data to a file. So if I go ls here, you can see that we have out.txt, and I can cat that. And you see that there is our output. Uh, I just want to show you that if I were to remove this close statement, the uh, the script would be uh, a bit whiny. No, it wouldn't actually. Okay, it's still best practice to use the cloud uh, cl use the close, so you don't have a lot of open file handles. But now you should see that since we have the append here and we ran the script twice, there will be uh, two instances of the output here. But if I just, for demonstration purposes, remove one of the uh, one of the arrows here. So now I'm going with remake the file and write the output to it instead of just append. Then if we run the script, that's cat, Perl, file name, run the script, and then we're going to look at the file. Then we only have one instance of the file. So that's everything between the open and the close. Um, so I guess that's it. We practiced a little bit uh, of using the for each loop and we practiced a lot of open, uh, opening file handles and writing to files and taking input from files. And that's everything for this demo. I'll see you next time where we will work a little bit more with variables.